Hello YouTube, it's ShadowHero90, welcoming you to my show, Sexism in Movies and TV, where I expose and rip apart the gynocentric and misandric trash on mostly Western TV. For the most part, the films and shows that are really guilty of bashing men and doing nothing else, in fact, these franchises almost take pride in it, well, they c mostly come from either the United States or Canada. The positive male role models on Japanese TV are out in full display. Unlike here in the United States where most of them are either hidden away or covered up, never appear on screen, or are just, um, 100% cucked to make the female Mary Sue characters look good by comparison. Which, for the record, if you have to make a male character look bad to make the Mary Sue female character look good, then she isn't a good character at all. Now, there are tons of reasons as to why I do this show. One of which is, well, it's kind of easy to assume the fact that shows and movies like the one I like the ones I attack in this series are responsible for the fact that both men and young boys in this day and age have such low self-esteem. And a newer reason that I mentioned is the fact that no good male role models are on TV anymore. And in movies, they basically get cucked to make the girl characters look good. Which ties into the whole young men and boys have such low self-esteem issue that I brought up. Yes, because they are horrible characters. The men have to be made to look weak and or dumb to make these characters look good. And that's something I wanted to, well, bring up. And that's the fact that these girl power characters are all terrible role models. Well, on the other hand, all of the female characters who could be seen as good role models for girls are usually, well, limited to anime for the most part. Most fictional characters that girls see on TV that they would want to emulate are basically hor horrible characters. Not saying they're horribly written, I'm just saying they're horrible people. And outside of some of these characters, a lot of little girls want to grow up to become pop stars. And that is an occupation that requires 
whoever's doing the job to dress like a prostitute. And having given you reasons as to why I do this show, which amounts to the fact that feminist Hollywood will hurt everyone, the episode will now begin. Okay, in this episode, I am going to be reviewing the HBO original series, Velma. And I am completely self-aware when I say that, yes, I know, everyone has made a video on this steaming turd. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone who's seen my channel that I uh, do not like Scooby-Doo. It was a franchise that I never cared for, and even to this day, I can't stand it. And everything that I say in this review, I'm getting from these videos, because I've been through enough pain in the last few days. I do not need to torture myself by watching this abomination. And yes, I am getting my information from these videos. I don't think any of these people are liars. In fact, a lot of them are really credible sources. So, uh, yeah. I really do thank them for watching this steaming piece of shit, so I don't have to. Now, I have no problem with Velma being Indian. This is actually not the first time that WB has uh, race-bended Velma into an Asian girl. And the other changes to the cast do not bother me. I'm reviewing this show because it is horribly sexist and completely gynocentric and anti-man in every sense, almost every sense of the word. But not only that, this show is insanely racist as well. You see... I live my life by one rule. Never judge a person by the color of their skin. And believe me when I say, Velma is the antithesis to that rule. This is a show that will definitely judge someone by their skin color. Now, as you can see here, I have drawn together the movie on DVD. The first time I saw this, I really liked it. In fact, it was so good that I watched it five nights in a row. And around the time that movie came out, People were saying that everything in it was specifically designed to piss someone off. But in but this year, any idiot who would have said that would probably be singing Velma's praise until they were dumb enough to watch it. This, this is the embodiment of something that was made specifically to piss off everyone who watches it. And with that said and done, I will now begin ripping in to this worthless abomination that should have never been made.
I'm going to start by tearing apart the characters. And who better to start with than the main character of this train wreck, Velma, or as the internet sees her, Mindy Kaling's OC. She's judgy, she's bitter, and she makes every man or boy around her miserable every chance she gets. She's bitter, she's hypocritical, she's judgmental. This incarnation of Velma is a complete bitch in every sense of the word. They gave her an origin story where she loved solving mysteries uh, when she was a kid, and then her mom left her on Christmas because she bent o because she literally tried to find her Christmas presents. Yes, I can understand why this woman would leave. Any woman who would have who had who would end up having a daughter like Velma would definitely split. Doesn't matter how in love she is with her husband. A girl like that just isn't worth it. In addition to being a judgmental bitch, this girl believes in all of these racial stereotypes. She instantly, ass instantly assumes Fred is the murderer because he's a rich white guy, even though prior to him being blamed as the murder suspect, he talked to her, they bonded, and the next day, when she was getting harassed by everyone at school because they thought she was the one who killed that local popular girl, who is part of a group that she hates. She hates the popular students at her school. And this one boy throws a paper cutter at Velma. Fred, in, Fred he basically just steps in, grabs it, in mid, catches it in midair, and throws it back at the boy who was going to throw it at Velma. And how does this little bitch repay him? Why, by pinning the murder on him and telling everyone that he was the killer. And she treats Norval horribly as well. When he confesses his love to her, she breaks out, breaks out in stitches and almost pees herself. The court finds him guilty, and then, yeah, Fred's parents were willing to pay Velma's dad a lot of money, but she screwed, screw, screwed him over. Okay, and speaking of Fred, he's up next. More or less, they portray him as a loser and a complete man-child. In this iteration of Scooby-Doo, Fred is basically so rich and pampered that he apparently doesn't even know how to cut the food on his plate, which is what Velma uses to defend him. She, like I said before, she didn't claim that he protected her, which he did. She just claims that because he's a rich white guy, he is so spoiled and pampered that he can't even cut the food on his plate, which he can't. His dad is apparently only there to be ashamed of his son, 
And in addition to that, he has to be there to promote the lie that is toxic masculinity. Even though his sole purpose in this iteration is to be made fun of by them constantly calling him a quote-unquote toxic male and a... And they literally make him a man-child in this. And Velma does have a crush on him, apparently. That's only because this Velma is Mindy Kaling's OC. And a lot of people say that Mindy Kaling is attracted to white guys. This is the woman who went on Conan and admitted that she gave a co-star who apparently was below her in the pecking order mouth to mouth without his consent. And then, jo in a very joking way, just labels herself the kissing bandit as if uh, what she did was more or less just typical Hollywood stuff. Yeah, this guy's only reason for being on the show is to be humiliated. He is constantly the target of dick jokes. When they try to defend him in court right before the trial, they literally dress him up as, well, the prime example of what you'd expect a man-child to look like, until it um, somehow goes wrong and he looks like Adolf Hitler, and they compare him to Hitler, admitting they compare everyone to Hitler nowadays. They also put Fred and Daphne in more or less a love triangle with Velma because even though they did this because, well, they already made Velma gay in one iteration of Scooby-Doo, the last one they did before this one came out. And, well, they needed a straw man argument. I'm pretty sure that everyone at WB and HBO already assumed that people were going to have backlash over this series. Because everyone is 100% tired of this SJW race race bending bullshit it's basically like ghostbusters 2016 if you don't like that they call you a bigot if you don't like Modern Star Wars, they call you sexist. If you didn't like any of the, well, either of the two Black Panther movies, they call you a racist. And for this, they can have their attempt at calling you a homophobe. And the only other reason that Fred is in this is so that Velma can force him to read The Feminist Mystique, a book that was written by an admitted and devout communist, might I add, and turn him into a feminist. In other words, this guy is basically just a walking punchline. He's only on the show to be made fun of. Okay, now on to Norville. 
His entire purpose in this iteration of Scooby-Doo is basically just a simp for Velma's attention until he eventually gets a girlfriend. He bends over backwards for this girl and she doesn't even give him the time of day. He was going to sell one of his kidneys on the black market just so he could get money to try and get her to date him. And uh, when he sees Daphne and Velma making out, he pretty much quits as far as I know. I don't know if he gets the new girlfriend because of this, or if that was just character development. Then there's the fact that the original version of this guy actually was a stoner. Well, they didn't really make him a stoner, but... It was basically an in-joke that the original version of this character more or less smoked pot, and that was why he was always hungry. In this version, the one where they could have actually gotten away with that is the one where they decide to make him squeaky clean, and basically... Go as far to say to Velma, if I ever think of getting into 420 or even 420 culture, kill me. And this was after he found out that the bulk of people who watched his snack blogs were all potheads. Well, not all of them, but most of them were. Not to mention the fact that they made him racist. When Velma tells him that Fred is the killer, he instantly believes it. Despite not knowing Fred. And then there's the fact that uh, Fred defended Velma and protected her when some boy threw a paper cutter at her. So it could actually be that he's hoping that Fred was the killer, goes to prison, and Norville's chances of dating Velma would go up. In short, this guy went from a stoner to an Ultra Instinct user to basically just a simp. And it's actually sad, really, since this is the dark, gritty, adult Scooby-Doo. Okay, on to Daphne. She, in this version, the people writing this said that Daphne's only meaning for existing in the original or any other iteration of Scooby-Doo was to be hot. And the first thing they do with her in uh, the f very first episode is sexualize her. They put her in a bisexual relationship with Velma only so that the show can have political correctness plot armor. Which is a term I just made up to say that they did this to protect the show from criticism. If you criticize the show, they will call you a bigot. If you have a decent brain and they don't like you, they will say that you are a bigot. They'll say you're sexist, racist, homophobic, and 
Bisexuality isn't the only thing that political correctness or PC plot armor applies to. It also applies to race, sexuality, gender orientation, and outside of making her a drug dealer trying to find out who her biological parents are because she was raised by two lesbian moms, they gave her absolutely no personality. They have her raising money by selling drugs, and that's basically the only personality, the only bit of personality they gave her. They said that her only reason for being on the show was to look attractive, and that she had no personality, and then the people who wrote this piece of dog shit went on to give Daphne absolutely no personality whatsoever. And then there's Velma's dad, who was Fred's lawyer during the trial. And man, did she ever screw him over. He had accidentally gotten his girlfriend pregnant, and this is something Velma actually knew. Her father was defending someone in court, someone that she knew was innocent, and yet her means of defending the boy who, the one boy who stood up for her was basically to start cracking jokes about how tiny his dick is. And the humiliation went over so horribly that he nearly has a mental breakdown claiming that he could have cut those girls' brains out if he wanted to. But he did, but he did not confess to doing it. And the only reason he went on that tirade was because his lawyer's bitch daughter wouldn't stop egging him on and cracking jokes about his biggest insecurity. Which leads to Velma's dad losing the trial as Fred was found guilty. So yeah, to be fair, this girl is a terrible daughter, as well as a terrible friend. And now it's time for me to address the elephant in the room. The thing that everybody assumes about this show and that yes it is bad but that was all done on purpose as a marketing gimmick and it well the image is basically the story of how this marketing strategy came into existence Apparently, at one point, Coca-Cola saw that their sales were dropping, so to compete with Pepsi, they created a terrible version of their product that was bad, but they made it bad on purpose, and then to make sure that their customers who were once loyal would come back, they re-released classic Coca-Cola. And a lot of people on the internet assume that that's what Warner Brothers is doing through HBO Max. Velma is to Scooby-Doo what New Coke was to Coca-Cola. A shitty imitation of the original product that only exists to make the next iteration that'll be almost identical to every other iteration 
that came before, except the one that was meant to be bad on purpose, look good by comparison. And then there's the fact that this is more or less no different than live-action Archie. Or in this case, live-action Archie did it better. Because what live-action Archie did was more or less rip off Scream the TV series. Yeah, um, the people who wrote uh, this train wreck knew that they couldn't make Archie work. They knew that the franchise was stupid. So they basically ripped off a, a show that's, that was successful by throwing in a serial killer. Yeah, the Black Hood from Live Action Archie is their version of Ghostface. Personally, I hate both Archie and Scooby-Doo. So, I'm a neutral party in this discussion. So, I'm just going to say the obvious fact. Live Action Archie did it better. And what do I mean by it? Well, they ripped off Scream in a better manner. Yes, Live Action Archie is a better ripoff of Scream the TV series than Velma is. Bo and both franchises and both franchises have a lot in common. One, they, well, the latest iterations of these characters are by far the most popular. Two, before the latest versions of said characters came out, both franchises, Archie and Scooby-Doo, were laughing stocks that no one in their right minds prior to the early 2010s could see working as a mature series. Three. Both of them have ripped off Scream the TV series because, well, the writers were self-aware that live-action Archie or mature Scooby-Doo could not work as a concept. And four, well, Velma, well, 4 is everything else that they have in common, because Velma ripped the show off. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say it. Live-action Archie is more or less a better version of Velma. Okay, to be honest, um... When I was growing up, I hated Scooby-Doo. I thought it was- I thought it fucking sucked. As an adult, I actually look at it and I see the fact that this show is so formulaic. All the episodes were the same. I mean, in almost every iteration of Scooby-Doo, it basically works like this. The characters show up, they find out about a monster, eventually they build a trap, catch the monster, pull the mask off said monster, and it turns out to be someone who either wants revenge or wants to scare people away from wherever the episode is located so that that person can, uh, well, claim whatever hidden money is hidden at that location. Like I said, this show was stupid. And I can only assume that the only reason 
that Warner Brothers keeps making new incarnations of Scooby-Doo is because, well, the assumption is that it's in their contract, because I can only assume that the guys who ran Hanna-Barbera were probably related by blood to the clowns who came up with Scooby-Doo and didn't have the heart to tell them that this show is a stupid idea. It treats kids like they're morons. And said clown or clowns were alive when Warner Brothers bought Hanna-Barbera, so to spare the clown or clown's feelings, the guys who ran the company negotiated that a new iteration of Scooby-Doo would be made to avoid, well, to avoid hurting the clown or clown's feelings, and if it's not, then everything WB acquires through buying Hanna-Barbera would be liquidated. That's my assumption. Because, logically, this makes absolutely no sense as to why Warner Brothers would waste time and money making this garbage. Even the 1980s Ralph Bocci Mighty Mouse series, when in its second season, actually called out Scooby-Doo for how stupid and formulaic it was in an episode where they were parodying various cartoon shows. His exact words were, I can feel my IQ dropping by the minute. That's how bad the writers of the 1980s Mighty Mouse show thought Scooby-Doo was. And mad when they had a cartoon show definitely felt that they were in the right to take a swing at Scooby-Doo. Which makes sense! The idea of the Scooby-Doo characters and what they would be like on Halloween would make sense! That when you look at how their show is, Halloween would be great for them, but they'd be making it a living hell for all these kids! And this is something that even the clowns who wrote the original Scooby-Doo never really understood. Scaring people is not illegal. Yes, trying to ruin someone's business is, but knowing about hidden treasure and scaring people away from a location to get said treasure is not illegal. In truth, uh, I mean, that's kind of the go-to joke that everyone cracks about Scooby-Doo. The fact that the, that the criminals in that world never really um, rob banks or kill people. They just put on monster costumes and scare people, which technically is not a crime. In short, I am really split on this one. At first, I mean, on one hand, I find it amusing that it turned out as terrible as it did. But on the other hand, this is racist, sexist, and overall extremely offensive to everybody. And since I am not a Scooby-Doo fan, I have hated Scooby-Doo since I was a little kid. I can honestly say that this show just fucking sucks. I'm just going to end this review by saying that if you're subscribed to HBO Max and you want to watch a cartoon that has nothing to do with superheroes, watch Jellystone. 
It's a laugh riot.